new relationship. New boo. But God has arrived. And it is just as equally profound as his blessings. And it amazes me that God has a route that man don't talk about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And sometimes, and probably a lot of times, you may be under God's route instead of blaming it on the devil. All right. All right. Everything is not the devil's fault. There's an old funny problem about the preacher was running late, the pastor was running late for church. And he was coming up the church steps. And he saw someone sitting on the church steps and service was going on, folk and testifying and having a good time. And when the pastor got to the steps, he realized there was the devil sitting on the steps crying. And the pastor went up to the devil and said, man, what you on the church steps crying for? And the devil looked back and pointed back toward the church. He said, all them folk in there lying on me. Amen. We thank God. Amen. I tell you, I'm a little, little exhausted. We thank God for those praying for us as we got the idea last night for the home going service. Mother Holmes' brother, first lady's uncle. Amen. We thank God for the fellowship the last couple of days we had down south. And God truly is, truly is good. Amen. Isn't it amazing that we thank God for those that uh, may not have been here throughout this month, but next Sunday would be the last month as we are having Black History celebrating Black History Month in the month of February. Amen. Dealing with blackness of the Bible. Those by watching by way of live streaming. Isn't it something that it's easy to find great numbers of people, African Americans, that would be in a white church, but you won't find great number of Caucasians to be in a black church. All right now. Thank Time went out a lot for me to uh, go into statistical details, but it's just something just a little food for thought that you can contemplate on later. Is it is something that thousands of us can go into a white church and have a white pastor underneath <laughs> us, but thousands of Caucasians won't come into a black church? Right now. All right now. Make it right. Joel Osteen have 20,000 members and 50% of them are black. We have no problem with that. If something systematic has taken place and then something <laughs> has taken place in the mind through, through years of oppression and depression that has entered into minds of all the people. We dealt one of the series on this this month dealing with the swear about the salt and we deal with how the Africans that never made the middle passes come across the Atlantic are different than the Africans that came through I was talking with an international pastor back here a few months ago. And he was talking about how exuberant and how willing that those Africans over in Kenya and other parts of Nairobi that are so eager to receive the Holy Ghost and so eager to to want to hear God and be excited about the Lord. They come in, in groups of 200,000 and 300,000 and 400,000 coming with the spirit of expectation. Something that 
he said to me was so profound, stay in my spirit. He said the reason why the African Americans don't come with the spirit of expectation like those over in Africa do. He said it's because we have too many options. All right. He said we got too many options. All right. If you as bank deny the loan, then there's Bank of America. If Bank of America deny the loan, then there's Regions. If Regions deny the loan, then there's uh, Teachers Credit Union and Union Credit Union. And if Union Credit Union and Teachers Credit Union deny, then, then there's a, a payday loan. Wow. <laughs> when we get a headache, Amen. Whether it be a migraine or whatever, we got, amen, uh, Health Care of America for something known as Obamacare. It's still got too many options. All right. So instead of just uh, saying, Lord, I need you to heal me, you know, I got Obamacare. Let me, let me run the gateway. Let me run the two shake. Let me run the safe marriage. Uh, we got too many options. But over in Kenya and over in Nairobi, they don't have no options. All right. They can't run the Mercy Hospital. They can't run the Oliver C. Anderson. Come on, somebody. Yeah, oh, my God. All right. When they hungry, they can't run and stand outside of Wendy's and ask somebody for $2, I need something to eat. Amen. Right. We got so many options. In America, African Americans. But over in Kenya and Nairobi, they don't have no options. Amen. So when they hear that somebody's coming to introduce them to Jesus, and they heard that Jesus is the one that would feed them, that Jesus is the one that'll make a way out of nowhere, that Jesus is the one that would heal their body. Hallelujah! They only got one option, and the one option that they got is the best option. And in America, sometimes we need to go back to the option. Tell somebody you got too many options. It's easy to let Jesus play second base. Play third base. And some of y'all got him out in the outfield. Some of y'all got him as a pitch hitter. He don't even get in the game until it's his time. But I don't know about you. <laughs> I didn't whittle my options down. That's it. To Jesus. Amen. That's what we need to do is whittle our options down. To just one. Here's, here's how it goes. If you got, amen, you got resources and then you have what is called source. And the resources is, is plural. And source is singular. Amen. Amen. And in order to get the resources, you have to have a resource. So I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with having resources. But you got to have the source in order to get the resources. Amen. The writer in the book of Matthew, in chapter number 6, in verse 30 and going through 33, it says, first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And it says, all the resources will be added. So in other words, what he's saying is, first seek the source. First seek the source. First seek the source. And then all the resources will be added unto you. So what's happened is, in America we are seeking the resources and not the source. Right. 
Can you help me? Those that's been that been serving God for a long time. This is just for about four of y'all. I've been serving God for a long time. And hey, you ever just got tired. Y'all quiet now. That's the bishop say, boy, you can hear a rat licking ice. <laughs> it just got tired. Just tired of the vicissitudes of life. Amen. That would just wear you down. Do I got a winner? Just, just, oh my God. Just got tired. Amen. Huh? Amen. Maybe y'all, maybe y'all don't ever get tired. Huh? Just get tired. <laughs> Although it sounds like a cliche when we say it's a blessing in present. And uh, it's like since 1991, here recently I've been asking God, why do you allow me to go through? So many things. Uh -huh. God spoke to me and said, if I don't let you go through it, that, amen, that the mother's would have a great Valentine's time of extravaganza, amen. Amen, hallelujah. <laughs> so we thank God, amen, for that. We'll be coming out of Genesis chapter number uh, nine, verse 20 through 27. And we're gonna, we're gonna, walk, we're gonna walk up from nine to 11, but we're just gonna read nine. Chapter 9, then we're going to chapter 10, then we're going to chapter 11, but after we read 9, I'm going to let you be seated. Amen. So you won't, amen, be weary in in well, well doing. <laughs> amen. Amen. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Uh, I thank God, amen, in uh, our theme of this year, amen, obtaining favor. Uh, just do it. Amen. Just do it. And one thing I should say, amen, to my African brothers and sisters, African-American brothers and sisters, amen, and my God, he gave me that back in the end of consecration, my just do it, amen. And I was talking, amen, with, amen, the little swoop, the Nike sign, amen, because we, we support Nike too much as it is. All right. Yeah, but but it's, it's somewhere a metaphor, uh, a just do it, amen, to keep obtaining favor. So <clears throat> so the Lord has spoke to me and said, no, that's what I told you to do because now they would understand, amen, in layman's term, amen, what I'm trying to say unto them, amen, because it's just a fact, amen, that we're the number one consumer in America. We left number two about eight years ago. We're the number one consumer in America. It's once a week. Yeah, so you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm, like, like I'm, I'm talking some strange language. Amen. They got a special one. She said he come out every other month, and then they got one that come out every week. We talking two hundred dollars shoe. They come up, they make a big, billions of dollars. Amen. And then watch this here. Amen. And the ones that's giving me the information, ain't no 18-year-olds in here. Amen. I got mothers in here. You know why? Because they're taking their grandchildren, their granddaughter, their grandson. Come on, somebody. I just keep it in real. Amen. Amen. And you too. Come on now. Now watch this, amen. When the new, the only difference in I can't tell the difference in it. Amen, my youngest boy, he buys them, amen. He work two jobs, he can buy however many he want, amen. So he, they, 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 amen. I'm like, what's the difference in this one that you got last month and this one here? Oh, you see right here on the sole? You see the sole right here? See, the, the last sole was red, this one here blue. <laughs> man, it's the same shoe, man. You paid another $200 because they changed the color of the sole? And then, amen, before the shoe come out, amen, if I'm hurting somebody, maybe I'm maybe going to help somebody. And watch this here. And before the shoe come out, the store opened up at 8 a.m. And black folk around the corner, in the mall, they got the mall security 
sleep with the little brims on standing there watching. So won't nobody mess with the other stores. Cause they ain't open yet. Waiting to get Nike that money for for their shoes. No, they Somebody just told me they get a ticket. She said, South Store, I'm going down too. This gonna be the year. This is gonna be the year. And you see, I got all different type guys. In two weeks, I got a financial seminar coming in here. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. This is gonna be the year. Hey, Amen. We're gonna get educated. Hey, Amen. This is gonna be the year that we're gonna get. We're gonna get educated. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. There's reasons behind. Hey, Amen. What, what we do. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Deeper than what we than what we know. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. When they used to come up with the different songs and the different myths and the different cliches about keeping up with the Joneses. That's us as a people. Amen. And some of it is detrimental. It's detrimental unto us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I used to, I've been a part of it myself. I used to get my kids to get good grades in school. Some of y'all will attest to this. Sit in the school with some buddies on. So you, got, you, got, you got to be over 50 to know about buddies. You know about buddies. You say, what is buddies? It's not a name, man. It's a mess of seeing you. So it's, it's, it's a buddies. It's an off-brand shoe. It's a no-name shoe. You can get them at Family Dollars. You can get them at Dollar General. Amen. It's just a tennis shoe. Amen. It's a nice tennis shoe. Amen. It looks good. Amen. You know, the shoe that got Shaq on it, that's a buddy. You send them to school with some Shaqs on, that's a buddy shoe. I had my kids literally crying on their way going to school because I put some buddies on. And it's a shame because they know they was going to get ridiculed by the, their peers in school. Huh? But I tell you what, the grades went up just like that. They want to get them Nikes back on. And they were wearing them Nikes. They could be cooped all over. They could be dirty and everything. But they, as long as they had Nike on, they wasn't buddies. They, they, they was cool. There's something wrong. We're going we to we get straightened out in 2020. We're not Black History Month. Amen. That's why you're getting a little extra stuff today. <laughs> Amen. You'd be surprised. There's a whole lot inside your pastor. Amen. It's a whole lot. <clears throat> Genesis chapter number 9. Verse number 20 through 27, and I'm going to let you be seated, and I guarantee you, I'll keep standing throughout the rest of the message. And Noah began to be an husbandman, and he planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine, and was drunken, and he was uncovered within his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father, and told his two brethren without and Shem and Japheth took a garment and laid it upon both their shoulders and went backward and covered the nakedness of their father. And their faces were backward and they saw not their father's nakedness. And Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his younger son had done unto him. And he said, Cursed be Canaan, a servant of servants shall he be unto his brother. He said, Cursed be who? Curse be Canaan, but Canaan didn't see. Canaan wasn't even there. <laughs> Ham was the one, the youngest one, uh, Noah, the one that saw his father nakedness and made fun of it. He said, Curse be Canaan. Come on, keep reading. And he said, Blessed be the Lord God of Shem, and Canaan shall be his servant. God shall enlarge Japheth, and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. And Canaan shall be his servant. Uh -huh, you may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. We headed somewhere. Amen. Our topic's going to be one language. It's going to be one language. It's going to be our topic on this. Amen. Afternoon. Amen. We gave you a little, a little hint here. Amen. It's a blessing seeing y'all. Amen. Amen, brother. Amen. Uh, limits of best to see y'all. Amen. 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 That's my cousin and his wife. Amen. Amen. And that's sister Joan's son and daughter-in-law. 
Amen, Brother Jones. Amen. I've seen him a long, long time. Amen. I and I told you about something. I gotta something. go to work tonight. You gotta go to work tonight? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta go to work tonight. All right, well, I'll see you when you ain't gotta go to work. Come yeah. back, see you. Amen. <laughs> Amen, hallelujah. See, I ain't got but one pastor in, in America like me. I can be, they may get into the word, then have a conversation. Amen. Amen. I don't try that when the anointed hit. Amen. I don't even know who you are. Amen. Amen. Definitely won't be having those type of conversations. Amen. So I told you a few, amen, the other week about, you know, Ham, the word Ham. Amen. No, it's your son Ham. The name, that, the name means black or sunburn. Amen. We have black history month. And we found out the reason, amen, with God, amen, had put this curse upon uh, uh, Ham, amen, uh, was because of what he had done. And he did it to his generations, uh, uh, Canaan and Cush, amen. And when you deal with even Canaan in the land of the Canaanites, amen. If you go into the geology of Jesus in Matthew chapter number one, I believe it's verse number five, when they start giving Jesus geology, going through the 42 generations, amen, it talks about, amen, Rahab, which we all know Rahab, amen. Rahab was a harlot, amen. Harlot, amen, is a, a nice way of saying prostitute. Quiet now. Amen. When you look at the geology, amen, of Jesus, amen. His great, 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 his five generations, his grandmother, amen, was a Canaanite. Amen. Amen. So wait, let me move on. Amen. If I got something special for y'all, it's going to take place today. Amen. So let me move on. So now, give me Genesis chapter 10, verse 6 through 10, real quickly. Amen. I'm going to get out of you all's way. Give me Genesis chapter number 10, verse 6 through 10. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what's she in? Come on and read. And the sons of Ham, Cush, and Mizraim, and Phut, and Canaan. Right. Cush, amen. And Compasses the whole amen land of Africa, which in the Bible, in the Old Testament, it says Ethiopia. But when it refers to in the Old Testament, the book of Ethiopia is referring to the land of Africa. Amen. Everything, amen, that has taken place, amen, in the Bible, amen, is dealing with overseas, it's dealing with Middle East, it's dealing with Africa. And at times this will not allow me to go into I can go into so many details, but I won't. Amen. Keep reading. And the sons of Cush, uh -huh. Seba and Havilah, and Sapta and Rama, uh -huh. and Saptacha, and the sons of Rama, uh -huh. Sheba and Dedan. Uh -huh. And Cush begot Nimrod, uh -huh. and he began to be a mighty one in the earth. look what the word of God said, and Cush, amen, Cush, amen, which is Ham's son, Cush, amen, which means black or something, amen. So Nimrod, amen, was a black man. Amen. Do read your Bible. Research it for yourself. Nimrod. Who was Nimrod? He, he came to be a mighty one on the earth. You may be seen in the presence of God. Give me Genesis. Uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 3 through 9. I'm moving, amen, somewhat expeditiously. Amen. Nimrod. So who was Nimrod? Nimrod was Cush's son. Who was Cush? Cush was Ham's son. Amen. Which made Cush, amen, Noah's grandson. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let us read. And they said one to another, Go uh -huh. to, uh -huh. let us make brick uh -huh. and burn them thoroughly. Uh -huh. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. Uh -huh. And they said, Go to, uh -huh. let us build us a city uh -huh. and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us build a city and a tower whose top reach into heaven or into the sky because you know you can't build anything that's going to go with God said in heaven. Amen. But look at, amen, Nimrod. Amen. Which is Noah's, amen, uh, grandson, a great grandson. His great grandson, amen, because Cush was his grandson. Amen. This is Ham's, amen, grandson of Nimrod, the great warrior of Nimrod. Amen. Keep reading. And let us make a name. Now watch this right here where this comma comes in. It's saying, and let us make us a name. You remember I told you many, many times that, that God told Abraham that I'm not going to make your title great, but I'm going to make your name great. But look what they say. Let us go to make us a name. Amen. Make us a name. Let us be on this tower. Amen. And make us a name. Keep reading. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Uh-huh. And the Lord to see the city and the tower. Now watch this, it's saying the Lord came down. I don't care how high you think you are or where you going, God will always have to come down to where you at. Keep reading. Which the children of men built it, 
And the Lord said, Behold, uh -huh. the people is one. Uh -oh. They have all one language. He said, Behold, and God said, Look at here. He said, Let us come down. Amen. Who was us? How when our law made it to let you know that Jesus was there in the beginning because Jesus was the word. Amen. The word was with God. Amen. He said, let us come down. Amen. Come on. Keep reading. And this they began to do. Uh -huh. And now nothing called Babel because the Lord did there confound the language of uh -huh. all the earth. Of all the earth. And from this did the Lord scatter them abroad upon uh -huh. the face of all the earth. And we love the face of all the earth. Here's the problem. They was disobedient. Amen. By selling them what they feel they was going to do to make their name great. Amen. Watch this here. God had clearly commanded them to be fruitful and to multiply and fill the earth. Amen. That was in Genesis chapter number 9 and verse number 7. Watch this. God does not tolerate disobedience. That's the reason why Saul, amen, lost his position as king. God, I do not tolerate. Are y'all hearing me closely? Amen. Are you hearing me clearly? God does not tolerate disobedience. And this is exactly what the inhabitants of Babel was doing. When you look into the research of Nimrod, this great warrior, amen, who was building this tower, who he thought was going to go all the way to the sky and to heaven, wasting all of this, amen, time just to make a name for himself or for their self, amen. They were being prideful, which is a wicked sin. The text clearly reveals the state of mind of these people. Let us make a name for ourselves. <laughs> Tell somebody I'm not trying to make no name for myself. <laughs> Come on, talk back to me. If you talk back to me, we can get out of here in 15 minutes. <laughs> Come on, tell your neighbor, I'm not trying to make a name for myself. <laughs> Amen. The name has already been made. <laughs> Hallelujah. They were bent on pride <laughs> and so consumed by it, they wanted to create a monumental skyscraper. Oh my God. Think about this. Amen. You go to New York, any of these big cities right now in St. Louis. Amen. The, Every time somebody build, a man, a, a skyscraper, somebody got to build one taller than the other one. I remember when the Sears Tower, I think it's called the something, the Ellis Tower or something now, amen, because it was a hundred and so many stories high. And then, because they had to, build a skyscraper taller than the Empire State Building. And then somebody, I think, over in Dubai, they built the, another one that's five stories taller than the one that's in Chicago. Amen. To put their name on it, come on somebody, to make their name great. Oh my God. But look at here. It's amazing. I remember, I think it was about five years ago, Sister Henny, you was there. We went to the Sears Tower and took the young people. Yeah, Sister Jazz, where you at? They got a big glass thing. Amen. Where they didn't put, or you, I think we own 100. 10th floor or something where you can walk out on this glass thing and look all the way down 110 10 stories. Hey, Amen. I remember sister, sister Jazz Blackburn, she peeked over, over that glass. Y'all know y'all passed out. I don't play too much. But I kind of gave her a shove over there on, on the glass. Oh my God. Because it was very scary. It was so high. But the point that I'm making, the amazement of how man, oh my, oh my God, with the intelligence coming from this little fight night man, Mind. When you put your mind together, the things you can get done, it was just amazing to me, amen, to be up that high and just realize that man started down in the earth with a foundation, amen, and built this skyscraper way up in the sky. Don't tell me what you can't do when two or three come together in Jesus' name. Come on now, he'll be a God in the midst. Hallelujah, that's why the devil loves confusion. That's why the world that he's not the author of confusion. That's why the devil loves confusion. Hallelujah. And the Bible also says that where there is unity, there is strength. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but sometimes I need some strength. Tell your name, I need some strength. Sometimes. The Bible also says that the strong shall bear the infirmities of the weak. So let me, let me move on. Hallelujah. Give me Proverbs 
Proverbs. Put Proverbs real quick. Chapter number 16. And verse number 16 through 20. Somebody shout hallelujah. I won't be before you long. And I got something else for you today. Hallelujah. Look at here. Go ahead and read, Sister India. Proverbs chapter 16. Verse 16 through 20. How much better is it to get wisdom than gold? And to get understanding rather to be chosen than silver. The highway of the upright is to depart from evil. He that keepeth his way preserveth his soul. Pride going before destruction. Uh oh, oh. We just read that the folk was prideful. They wanted to do it their way to make a name for themselves. But pride goeth before destruction. Go ahead and keep reading. And a haughty spirit before a fall. Oh my God. Better is it to be of an humble spirit with the lowly. Tell somebody it's better to be humble. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Than to divide the spoil with the pride. Than to divide the spoil with the pride. You may be seated. Look at here. God, and I'm trying to close. And God knew that they could do much evil work collectively. This is why he utters, behold, they are one people and have one language. I told you our topic was one language. And they have one language. And this is only the beginning of what they would do. And nothing they propose to do would now be impossible for them. That's Genesis chapter 11 in verse number 6. Watch this. So after this God confounds the languages, which is why now we have many languages today. Oh my God. Are y'all with me? What's interesting to note is this. When people all had one language, they achieved incredible things very quickly. It didn't take them a long time. Somebody say very quickly. Even the potential to create a building that reached into the heavens all without today's technology or machinery. But after God changed the language, it greatly diminished, watch this, their productivity and their ability. See, well, what about today? Somebody say, what about today? What about today's time? Look at here. We live in an age where we now have translators. Y'all know y'all see the UNs. Oh my God, when they have the UN meetings, or even the president. Come on, somebody. When he's doing the, the union address, they got translators to where it's being translated. Even while he speaks, translated into other folks' language. Incredible feats in human history. We have decoded the human gene. Oh my God. Y'all better watch out. We have decoded the human gene. Made huge discoveries in science, engineering, technology, just to name a few. What God knew was happening in the time of Babel is once again happening today. What God Try 
trying to make a name for ourselves. We are trying to worship man instead of God. You gotta be careful. Tell your neighbor. Say neighbor. You better be careful on where you placing God in your life. Have you ever heard of that term? Weapons of mass destruction. Are y'all listening? The two atomic bombs that ended World War II. Oh my God. Those were weak. Somebody say weak. The atomic bomb is weak. say but today but today there are an estimated 10,000 all of these murders all of these deaths as though it's normal the devil is alive but me and hearts have wax cold hallelujah but look what Jesus said I'm still hopping you 24 and Jesus says but he who stands to the end shall be saved and Jesus said in Matthew 24 oh my God until my word is preached up all over the world now he calls up The word is now being heard all over the world. It's time for Jesus to come back. It's time for Jesus to come. Tell somebody, are you ready for the Lord? salvation in any other 
Oh! 